Hey y'all, there's a ton of news out there for the Appalachian Trail, and the biggest news is through hiker season is off and running, or off and hiking. So let's dive right in. I'm Ram Dino, and I'm here to bring you everything that's going on with the Appalachian Trail news and what's going on with the through hikers out there. So we had our first through hiker from our sponsorship list that has kicked off and has left Amaclola Falls. He did a, the approach trail course portion of the approach trail is closed, uh, but he stepped off and that is Matthew. He's on our support list there and he has made it on trail and he checked in at 8 a.m. on January 1 as the very first number one hiker registered for 2024 said his pack weight was in at 40 pounds so that's pretty pretty respectable pack weight there uh, but that is a winter weight going on so we'll see how that slims down as he goes throughout the course of it but he has made it to neil's gap and is uh, heading on up uh, continuing on north and he's pushing trying to get to a shelter uh, before this weather comes in in the next couple of days uh, Brent Garvey from the Brent Garvey Hikes Channel, he also reported in a couple weeks ago that they had had uh, around three Nobos already that had come through Mountains Crossing. So not familiar with Brent Garvey, uh, but he um, apparently maybe he works there at Mountains Crossing or certainly somewhere in the area for him to know about that. So that's the only person that's checked in that's on our support list that has stepped off. Uh, five stack was supposed to have stepped off by now, but he has moved his start eight date out to January 11th, somewhere around there. He's got some family issues going on, but hopefully that's not going to be an issue for him. And then we got a couple folks that are starting, uh, this upcoming week that are on our support list. And that's Warhammer. He is doing no bow from Springer and he is starting on the 8th. And Drifter and Blue, which is a team, they are starting on the 14th, and they will be doing the approach trail, the portion that's open. So if you guys out there, when you do get started, you'll sign in at the registration book. Uh, and when you sign in down there, uh, if you could take a picture of that registration book, and, and this goes out for all the through hikers that are on our support list or that will be checking in and want to be part of uh, my updates each week. If you could take a picture of that, uh, you may have to do it clandestinely. They kind of frown upon that, but uh, what I'm looking for is the pack weights and to get an average just to give that data out there for folks. Um, when you send that picture to me, I will be sure and blot out any of the private information like the addresses or anything like that that's on that support list that might cause an issue there. So uh, when you get started, that'd be great. So speaking of sp starts, the best way to get started down there that I know of is, and that is to, of course, go through all of your pack, make sure you've got everything dialed in. And one of the things you need to include while uh, as part of that process, making sure that you have element electrolyte drink mix, uh, electro element electrolyte drink mix. This is a science based electrolyte replacement mix that you put in with your water. Uh, it's got all kinds of good stuff in it, but no junk. But the main stuff it has in it is the a thousand thousand milligrams of sodium salt. 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. So that is the basis of it. And that is really mainly what it's got in it. And there's no sugar. There's no kind of coloring. There's no artificial ingredients. There's no gluten, no fillers, no BS like that. It's formulated to help everyone with their electrolyte needs. And it's perfectly su suited not only for hikers, but people that are uh, back home, soccer moms, any kind of sports enthusiast that's doing that, uh, that's out there depleting those electrolytes. Uh, key, it's good for folks that are on keto diets, low-carb, paleo diets, all those diets. It meets all those the, that you need to make sure that you're staying within your diet. For me personally, I use it uh, when I'm out on trail. I also use it when I'm home. And the biggest thing I've noticed on trail is that it keeps me from having cramps at night. And when I have cramps at night, I'm waking up, I'm seeing every hour, and I just don't get good sleep when I'm out there on the trail. And so sleep is vital to have that on trail. It doesn't take too many nights of not having good sleep to where you're totally depleted. So it's important for me to use that. And the stuff, I got to tell you, is addictive. So I love it here at home. Keeps me, my electrolytes in balance no matter what I'm doing. Uh, right now, during this uh, holiday season, 
Uh, and for the next little bit, they have some special flavors out that are just available for a limited time, and that's chocolate mint, chocolate chai, and chocolate raspberry, all with the same electrolyte replacements in them. Uh, but they make really good hot, like hot cocoa drinks or hot tea drinks and stuff. So uh, go and check that out there. Uh, and right now, Element is offering to my community only a free sample pack with any order. So that's eight of the uh, sample different flavors that they got out there. You can get those free with any order that you have. Uh, and it can be claimed whether you're a first time uh, user of Element or one that's on their subscription system or any type of returning customer, you can still use that. And if you're new and you don't like it, then there is no question refund. So they'll give you all your money back and you don't even have to return the product. So in order to take advantage of this special offer, you need to go to drinkelement.com slash Ramdino. Uh, and that's available only through that link. So that's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Ramdino. So go and check that out. Go and let me know if you go and uh, do that and what your thoughts are on uh, Element Drink Mix. I love it. I think you will too. Now, let's get back to what's going on with the through hikers out there. So we've got a, about 71 folks that are on our support list. Uh, if you're a through hiker and you'd like to be on that support list, the link is down below in the description section to go and place yourself on that. And of course, if you're part of the hiker community and you're looking for folks to support, looking for folks to go see their social media, then that link is down in the description section as well. I uh, hope you'll take advantage of that and go and support these through hikers all the way throughout the course uh, of their trip. So some stats we've got for you uh, since our last update. Uh, last update, we were at 1,294 Sobo, and now we've gone up 204 Sobo, uh, I'm sorry, Nobo. We were at 1,294 Nobo, and now we've gone up to 1,498. So that's an increase of 204 Nobo uh, over our last update. Sobos, of course, is a little early for them to be registering right now, but we have increased by 14 uh, hikers from uh, from 55 to 69 uh, on the flip floppers, and then for Sobo, it's a little early for them as well. And we have increased about nine from 30 to 39 Sobo. So uh, we have a total increase in registrations from hikers from last week of 227 uh, hikers that have uh, that, that have registered for their through hike. Uh, March 1 did reach its max capacity, so the trail is maxed out according to the ATC, and that's more than 50 hikers starting their hike, and uh, that's on March 1st. Of course, April 1st is, is really close behind with about 49 hikers, so uh, there'll be several days in there when we will broach that 50 hiker uh amount that the ATC sets as the maximum carrying capacity. That doesn't mean that they won't register more. Uh, if they have a hundred hikers come in on a day, they'll, they will register them. And, and just remember these registrations I'm getting are directly from the ATC website. So a lot of folks don't register their hike. A lot of folks register their hike for the first time when they get to Amicola Falls State Park and get checked in. So these numbers will increase as we go up and somewhere anywhere around 10% to 20 25 percent of folks don't actually register their hike at all so you can see the trails getting already getting pretty crowded down there now even though it's getting crowded and even though we got a lot of registrations it we're still on a downward trend for red for registrations compared to what we've had in years past so in years past we've just uh you know, uh, 2021, 2022, those were big years, uh, probably because people were, had pent up demand out there due to COVID and having to get off due to COVID or not even starting their hike due to COVID. And so, uh, now, you know, they want to get back on and want to get that done while they could, while they were still in cases of, uh, older people while they were still had their health. Um, but in any case, uh, we are looking like we're on a downward trend there. So we'll see if that continues throughout the uh, rest of the year. So I want to give a shout out to a couple folks that uh, supported the channel through the Super Thanks function down below. And that's Middle Sister Hikes 
and Joe Peters 5796. So thank you to both of you folks for supporting the channel with the super thanks down there. Of course, you can support the channel, the channel through super thanks, become a Patreon member. And of course, you can also go to my uh, merch page there and you can uh, find that uh, there in the link down below uh, in all those ways support merch. I uh, had uh, Valene 178. She said she loved the merch store and now she just needed to decide what she wanted to buy. So thanks a lot to all those folks for supporting the channel. Anything you can do to support the channel and help me support the Thu Hiker community and the hiker community in general uh, just helps me out tremendously. So we got a ton of news out there. Uh, Whispers is our northern correspondent, and he sent in that the Katahdin trails now have opened. So if you're a Sobo out there and you want to go ahead and get an early start on it, then you can go ahead and get up there uh, to Katahdin and start there at Katahdin at the sign and go ahead and start your Sobo. Now, just keep in mind, it has been very cold up there. It's below zero temps on Katahdin this weekend, and they've had some precipitation as well. Um, so what opening means now is, so of course, Katahdin closes at, uh, when it gets so wet up there in the fall and in the winter before everything freezes over that they're concerned about the high Alpine environment being damaged by hikers. So they shut all the trail systems down to where nobody can access Katahdin, uh, up there just to protect uh, the environment. But once it gets frozen over, snowed over, iced over, then there's no worries about that because you're not going to be trampling on the, uh, the precious plants and the alpine environment that they have there so they open it back up don't have a lot of subos that start because it's so cold up there and because conditions are so uh, i mean they can be actually deadly up there uh, but we have had sobo that have started in the past this early so uh, i believe aquaman from two years ago he did that and then i think I'm not sure if we had horsepower if he was sobo or not but in any case we do have people that start early uh, and so that is not that unusual. And then Ewok, she's a subscriber and she sends in that she experienced a glitch on her iPhone and her far out app. Uh, so she didn't update on her iOS 17 before the new year. And then when she went back and tried to access far out, uh, she was having some issues. It wasn't working. So she messaged the support team, said they're very supportive and they recommended deleting the app and then reinstalling. So you're still going to have your account. Even if you delete your app, you'll still have your account with them there because you'll have your account credentials. Uh, remember your password. If you don't, you'll have to reset that. She had to do hers, but she said once she did all that, everything worked out fine. So if you have the Far Out app, make sure it is working before you leave home. And then I mentioned a few weeks about a re a few weeks ago about a reroute around the uh, Palisades Parkway up there in New York, uh, and I did have uh, quite a few comments of folks uh, that were there. I had mentioned that the ATC I felt like was overreaching on that. Um, they rerouted around that road crossing there uh, when there was a hiker that was killed. And, and certainly that is tragic, but that is not something that happens all the time. Injuries don't happen all the time. It is a dangerous crossing. However, there are other dangerous crossings on the AT that are a whole lot worse than that. Um, on this particular crossing, traffic's only coming one way. Uh, it's flying because it's coming into New York City, but it's only coming one way. Uh, and, uh, and then I think you have to cross across an island and then the traffic again is going the opposite direction coming out of New York city. Uh, but again, it's only going one way. So you only got to look one direction as opposed to trying to cross four lane highways up in Virginia and up in Vermont where you're around a blind curve. Uh, those I believe are just a whole lot more dangerous, whole lot more worthy of doing a reroute. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, I did have some folks that agreed with me there, uh, that they, and then there were even folks that said that they took the old route and didn't use the detour because the only water source was along that old route, uh, for most of the day. Uh, the road crossing, uh, the, uh, parkway, uh, was one of the easiest and safest crossings that they thought. Uh, and then, um, they also mentioned the same thing I did about the, the traffic, flow uh, and how there are a lot more uh, worse places on the trail to cross than there. So they didn't know why they felt like the ATC jumped the gun. 
Uh, another subscriber wrote in that uh, hikers miss a lot well, along that reroute uh, and that they've done the reroute, but when hiking that section, they will continue to go on the parkway. So I'm not saying you should or should not do that. Uh, certainly if you're a through hiker uh, who is um, you know, dyed in the wool, want to make sure that you get every single section of the trail done per the ATC in order to get your ATC through hiker recognition, then uh, that is something that you'll have to, uh, you'll have to take that reroute if that's something that you're concerned about. And then we had a, another hiker in that, uh, that indicated they were fighting this needless and poor reroute by going rogue and reblazing the real trail, as they put it, which was the old section there, and maintaining it. Uh, so we're not, we're not going to indicate who that is to uh, protect them so there's no uh, blowback from the ATC to him. But, uh, but you got somebody out there who's talking about actually maintaining the old one. And you'll notice I've had quite a few people uh, today and throughout the course of my updates that quite a few folks that send in news that I've mentioned here. So this is a community channel. I'm just the guy out here that's, that's speaking. And so if you've got some news out there on the trail that you feel like needs to be gotten out to the community, then please, by all means, send that in as much information as you can. I may not be able to get all of it. Uh, online and some of it uh, may be that it's outdated uh, so it may not be pertinent anymore but i'll try to get those mentioned out as much as i as i can and then wallace 5859 is a subscriber and he had a question about the shanties and he said that he has a national uh, park pass and he wants to know if that will cover the entry fee uh, going into the shanties and the smokies and so I uh, contacted uh, both parks, and I did not hear back from the Smokies, so I'm not sure. But I can tell you what I got from the Shanties. Uh, from the Shanty Headquarters Information Desk, they indicated that as a veteran and a holder of the Interagency National Park Pass, uh, that you, uh, I asked them if I have to pay entrance fees and user fees or backcountry fees for camping and hiking. And they indicated as long as you have your veterans pass with you when you arrive at the park entrance, you will not have to pay the entrance fee. You will, however, have to pay the fee for the backcountry uh, camping. So, and you'll have to go to recreation.gov starting January. They said the 11th. I think that actually started January 1st. However, so you do get in the park, but you still have to pay backcountry camping fees. So in the Smokies, I would imagine you're probably still going to have to pay that fee. You don't have to pay a, 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 a park. There's no park fee to get in the Smokies. There is now fees for parking, uh, and there are backcountry fees. So I imagine you would still have to pay those backcountry fees. Uh, to as a through hiker however i will still try to get that information directly from the smokies if i can so if you have any other questions out there please send those questions in to me as i said this is a community channel there may be somebody else here in the community that'll see those comments and can answer that or can lead us to the right place if not i'll and go out there and try to find that answer if i can't find the answer i'll make something up that sounds really plausible uh and really believable but seriously uh, I'll be, I will do my best to go out and find those answers for you if I don't already know them. And then there is some damage on the AT up in Baxter State Park. Of course, it's way early for that, but uh, unless you're a Nobo uh, or correction, a Sobo that's starting this early, uh, but hikers ending their park along the AT should be aware that the boardwalk and bridge structures there were damaged around the Grassy Pond Outlet and approximately a half mile south of Katahdin Stream Campground due to the flooding that they had up there. So the structure's still there, but it's unstable, uh, and crossing is not recommended. They do have a temporary reroute, but it's going to take you over some open water. Uh, so that may not be a great uh, reroute for you as well. Uh, you can avoid all that by utilizing the Blueberry, Blueberry Ledges Trail that travels uh, four miles from Abol Bridge parking area to the Birches. 
uh, and they are expecting repairs to be completed sometime in the early of summer of this summer, 2024. So by the time the bubble gets up there, they're hoping to have all those repairs uh, in place. Uh, the road to Deep Gap in North Carolina is closed. So that is the first bailout point. Once you cross over into North Carolina, go through Bly Gap there, the next gap that folks can get to you in case you need to bail out or need to get in the town is deep gap road. And, uh, that is a far service road and that is closed. So you won't, uh, it closes every year this time, uh, and opens usually sometime in March. So just depending on what the conditions are up there. So apparently they've been getting enough snow and ice in the Franklin area to where that is being closed down. Uh, your only other option, there's a trailhead uh, that you can hike out to to get to another open road, or you can hike the six, mil, six miles down from uh, Deep Gap down to where the gates are, and, uh, and then you could get a pickup down there, a shuttle down there. So that's all the news I've got. That is a ton of news out there. You may need to go back and re-watch re some of that. Uh, but we'll be getting back to you with more of that. So send in your questions or anything. And as always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out here.